Welcome everyone, I'm Snell Gaming, and today we'll be talking about advanced tips that the best players of Lemon Skate use to get an edge in their opponents. Let's get right into it. Tip number one. Many people try to reset the time loop a lot to see where their characters run, often in order to Carl shield them. But did you know that you can reset the time loop while you are spawning in? Doing this will allow you to see where each of your characters are and how they move relative to where you spawn in, making those Carl shields much easier to hit. Do keep in mind that there is about a 5 second cooldown on how often you can reset the time loop, so be careful not to reset the loop right before picking your character. Tip number 2. Now this trick is very close to my heart. It's a trick which is amazingly cool in some situations if you can pull it off. But also it's pretty difficult to pull off. So let me explain it to you. In Lemnus Gate, projectiles will collide with and trigger on one another. Keep in mind that is for projectiles only, not hit scan. All the projectiles currently in the game are Deathblow Rockets, Deathblow Mines, Capitan Grenades, Carl Shields, Toxin Goo, and Toxin Displacers. So what does this mean? Well, it means that you can shoot any of these projectiles out of the sky. Shoot some toxic goo at a rocket, and the rocket will explode mid-air, and the toxin goo will also trigger mid-air. Throw a grenade at an airborne shield, and the grenade will explode, and the shield will trigger mid-air. This is really cool, in my opinion, but I find that the only really realistic use of this is with toxin. Toxin's goo has a relatively large hitbox and can be aimed and fired very quickly, which makes it ideal for shooting down projectiles. Personally, I've used this a lot against deathblow lineups in Search and Destroy. It is rather tricky to do though, but I recommend trying to find the sweet spot and then either semi-spamming your toxin to hope to hit the rockets, or time it well and fire single shots to shoot them down. This can also be useful when fighting a Capitan or Deathblow, because you can fire goo right when they're about to fire a rocket or throw a grenade, and then it will explode in their face, dealing damage. There's also a fun interaction if you throw two Carl Shields at each other. Mind you that this is pretty hard to do. If you do manage it though, both shields will trigger on that one spot that they collide, and the blue and red shield will just sort of merge into a purple shield. I have to give credit to Eric Drakip on YouTube for finding this, because he's the only person who I've ever seen do this, and I'll link his channel below if you want to check him out. One small side note though, although Toxin's Displacer is a projectile, it does not adhere to these collision rules. It will not be affected by any other projectiles. And this is because that Toxin's Displacer actually teleports Toxin, meaning that if she throws it in one spot in her round, and the next round you shoot it mid-air, it would cause her to teleport to that location mid-air, instead of the other location on the ground, which would just totally desync all her movement and wouldn't really work. Tip number three, sometimes it is useful to use bursts when firing. This mainly applies to Capitan's gun, especially when you have low accuracy and stability on it. Bursts will allow you to reset the stability and accuracy after firing for a while, which is really helpful for hitting all crits on objectives or enemy operatives. Tip number four, do you ever play a Carl round and miss that shield on a character? Well, fear not, that shield is not wasted. In a later round, you can try to intercept that shield with another character, giving them some extra defense for carrying out their timeline-altering deeds. This does take a bit of practice though, and I wouldn't rely on catching the shield as your overall plan. The shield is more just a bonus. Now, if you want to take this up a notch, you can actually prepare for this. You can throw a shield at a character in one round, then the next round you can intercept the shield with another character, then the next round intercept it with another one, and you can even go on like that if you want to. The reason this is useful is because it's fairly little effort on your side, but it could be a big headache for your opponent. 
Imagine this. Round 1, Rush attacks an objective. The opponent kills Rush. Round 2, you shield Rush and he survives. Now the opponent has to dedicate another operative to kill Rush. Round 3, you intercept the shield on Rush, which gives your current operative a nice defense. And there's no real downside to this, because Rush dies anyways after your opponent has committed two operatives to killing him. Now, keep in mind this won't work as well if your opponent knows to overkill your operatives, which a lot of people are learning to do. Tip number 5. When spawning into a match, there are 5 potential positions around your gate that you can spawn into. 5 spawns for 5 operatives. Knowing where you will spawn in is actually a really big advantage. For example, you might need to spawn closer to the right side to get to a piece of XM in time. Or you might want to spawn next to another character who you want to shield with Carl. Or you might want to spawn in a spot where you have a good sightline with Striker, etc. Although the spawns may seem kinda random, Garen and Crow on the Lemnus Gate Discord actually prove that they are not. Where you will spawn is determined by what round and which map you are playing. If you're going first on Iridium Plains, then your first operative will always spawn right smack dab in the middle. Your second character will always spawn all the way to the left, etc. You should keep in mind though that these spawns are different depending on if you're playing first or second on the map since the two sides of the map have different spawn positions. The spawns also change between maps, so you need to know the spawn for each individual map to make good use of them. Luckily for you, I went through the painstaking process of testing all these, as you can see on screen. At the end, I will also post a graphic that summarizes the spawns on each map so you can refer to it in the future. Also, you should note that I've labeled the person who goes first as player 1 and the person who plays second as player 2. This video was a ton of work to make, but I really think that the tips in here will help a lot of you guys out. If you did enjoy it, please consider liking and subscribing, and stay frosty out there.